Guys, I want to take some time tonight for an apology. A few weeks back, before Mark went on all of his vacations, I was giving him a hard time about his viewing of the WWE and his very slow process of canceling his subscription. And the truth is, his bringing up the wrestling has completely changed my free time. Um, since that moment, I went out and bought the WWE video game. I started watching Raw and then SmackDown and then NXT and 205. But that's not what we're going to talk about tonight. Guys, last weekend, not the most recent weekend, but the weekend before, AEW All Elite Wrestling came out with their first pay-per-view. And I, um, like the little sycophant I am, followed it on Twitter. And then about an hour after each match, I would find the YouTube video videos of each of the matches and i watched the uh pay-per-view and it's entirely on about a one hour delay and guys i cannot tell you how great of a time i had aew's double or nothing was the greatest pay-per-view i have ever seen and so tonight i want to talk to you guys a little bit about what your opinions on wrestling are what your opinions were what drove you away from it what's brought you back to it um and if you've even heard about aew or the elite or the young bucks or any of these people who have put this new promotion together i just want to talk to you guys about wrestling and your thoughts and and kind of you know when i when i first really got to know you guys you guys were huge into wrestling and then i think we all kind of we, we kind of left that party and every decade or so i i kind of like swing back into it and that moment for me is now and i i really wanted to talk to you guys about it so uh i'll turn it over to you well, first, I have heard of, of that league because I heard uh, that Tom Dunn was about to invest in it. So you should get really excited about this new <laughs> this new because oh, those right. things always work out so well for you. I'm a little worried. This time it's, it's Shad Khan, the owner of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Oh, you're fine then. Shouldn't, shouldn't, shouldn't be a problem. So Mark and I watched wrestling as kids. I don't entirely remember why or how we got into it. I know our parents didn't like it. Um, they once actually entered Mark in a contest to win tickets, and he actually won tickets, and then they were super pissed that they had to take us mm -hmm. to it to go see it. Um, but then we we fell out of it for what I think we got to. I don't think it was cool in middle school. I don't know. I just want to pause right there. So just to add that that was a house show we went to featuring as a main event Hulk Hogan versus Ric Flair. Was it? I thought the main event was yes. Bret Hart and the Mountie. Nope. No, hmm. that they they were there, but the the headliner was Hogan versus Flair, and Mister Perfect was in Flair's corner because he was still injured and couldn't wrestle. Ah, I, I, I return you to your story. I bought I bought Hitman sunglasses at that that show. Um, so then we got out of it for for whatever reason. I think we both did relatively at the same time. Um, probably because it wasn't cool, or we were onto sports, or I discovered hockey, and Mark discovered. I don't know. Right. Mark, Mark did pot, whatever. And, uh, and that's not what I was going to go with. Actually, I was going to go with something else, but let's keep it up. Uh, PG rated. And then, uh, I, so I got back into it probably my either junior or senior, probably senior year of high school. And it was, I know it was right when, uh, it, it was at the height of, uh, what a WCW versus raw, and the New World Order, and it was a pay-per-view where they had a tournament for Survivor Series, and The Rock won it, and that was where he betrayed everyone and became the corporate champion, and they formed the, the corporate with Ken Shamrock and the big boss man and The Rock and all that. Uh, and I got into it because all my friends apparently had gotten back into it. So they were all excited, and I think I did it more kind of to, to fit in. And then the big thing was we went to one of our buddies' houses, after high school each day because he had the Nintendo 64 game where you could do a Royal Rumble and four people could be in at once. And then once you get thrown out, you just pass a controller to the next guy and he'd be whatever random person came into it. So we, we got into it that way and I was pretty big into it through college. And then I think that my time and my interest in it just died out. And I've had, I had a tiny flare up when I got XM radio the end of my 20s because i listened to the, i didn't actually watch wrestling i just listened to the daily wrestling show because it was uh en entertaining but i've never really re-engaged i don't think since college on any type of major level so so to piggyback on, on luke um he's right that we both fell out of it i got back into it because of him when uh i came back on break from college because 
did the University of Minnesota, we didn't live that far away from it. So I would always come back on over holidays or even just on long weekends. I would come back and, and we would hang out and he reintroduced it to me. And I, I stuck with it longer than him. I, I went through that whole attitude era of The Rock and Austin and The Undertaker. And then I really stayed with it until uh, probably 2001 when I remember that they bought the, the WCW and it was going to be this huge angle, the invasion, and you were going to get all these dream matchups. And basically everybody from WCW just got squashed because Vince wanted to prove how much better his product was. And I really just lost interest at that time. And then I don't know how I got, but, but also to be completely honest, I never completely fell out of touch in knowing what was going on with it. I would occasionally check in and just kind of see what was happening because I knew that the potential was always kind of there for me to like it and to get back into it. And so I never completely divorced myself from it. And then I got back into it again a couple of years ago, like a year and a half or so ago with this whole network. And it was you know, 9.99. And I thought, well, hell, I, you know, it's a Royal Rumble. I've got 10 bucks and I have Sunday evening to kill. And really enjoyed it and started watching some of the older matches on the network because you have access to all of their archives. And then, I, again, I sort of fell out of it because, as we may be discussing later, the, the storytelling has gotten really, really bad um, with their product and just completely uninteresting, um, pushing characters I have no interest in. And so... I fell out of it again about six months ago, but just never got around to canceling it until uh, last month. But even still, uh, if it's Monday night and it's slow and I don't have a good book to read or anything else, I'll tune in for an hour or so to watch it. So I I've, have never completely gotten away from it. But that, that brings us to today. Also, too, I will every week, probably for the rest of my life, check out WrestleCrap.com, which is a website dedicated to the worst in professional wrestling. It is the funniest thing on the internet. I like it. Well, to catch you guys up with AEW, um, basically Cody Rhodes, the, the son of Dusty Rhodes, uh, a, a tag team named the Young Bucks, and um, some wrestlers named Heyman Page and Kenny Omega, who were big stars, won the latter in Japan and the other one in, in, in Indies kind of came together to to put together a pay-per-view because somebody challenged and said that they couldn't they couldn't sell out an entire arena. And then they did it in four minutes and did this indie show about a year ago called or about eight months ago called uh, All In. And because of that, Shad Khan or Shad Khan, I think his name is um, the owner who keeps trying to move the Jaguars to London. Um, his son is like this huge wrestling fan, his son, Tony. And so he's kind of the Vince McMahon of AEW for, for lack of a better term. And um, you know, they, they did all this marketing on YouTube. I really encourage you if you're interested in all and anybody who's listening to this to go to being the elite. It's basically the YouTube channel for the young bucks or the nightmare family, which was the, the Cody Rhodes, but they all came together at double or nothing. And it was just absolutely phenomenal. I can't get into all the matches. We just don't have the time, but um, a great, undercard great you know they had some called the buy-in which was a 20-man royal rumble which was great it had tommy dreamer um brett the hitman hart showed up for a little bit um to to announce the new belt um they had a uh, glacier from wcw um they had my new favorite guys jungle boy and luchasaurus uh which is the latter is a dude who who's actually dressed up like a uh a dinosaur and they had orange cassidy whose gimmick is uh he's he's really tired by wrestling um so i i'm yeah, i'm i'm slightly concerned by a character called jungle boy based on what i've seen from other wwe and wrestling promotions like that that's i find that slightly terrifying and blackface it's no it's uh it's it's luke perry's son first of all and uh he is he got the name because he looks like tarzan essentially that's like okay so, okay like, it's like tag team partners with this Luchasaurus guy who's whose catchphrase he, he like looks like a lizard. 
dessert and he's got like green on his mouth and then at the end of every promo he's like and i have a master's degree um <laughs> so it's just a bunch of it's just a bunch of silly silly ass shit but it's it's insane and it is far you know like so let me take also, 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 also if i can can interject here um we cannot talk about this whole paper event without bringing up chris jericho's gut in that main event <laughs> I, I will mention that I haven't got to the main event yet. No, I still okay. talk about some things. Um, you got to check out SoCal Uncensored are hilarious. Um, the Young Bucks versus the Lucha Bros was the greatest tag team match I've ever seen in my life. Um, the Cody Rhodes versus Dustin Rhodes brother thing was the bloodiest match I've ever seen in my life and probably the, the match of the night. And then I thought, yes, is, is Chris Jericho out of shape? Yes. He's not as out of shape as he was when he took on Kenny Omega in Japan. Um, he was in a lot better shape this type around. But what was remarkable is how well he still wrestled uh, to this day. And then obviously at the end with John Moxley, who uh, formerly Dean Ambrose from WWE, who came down, um, you know, at the end, like through the crowd, it was just absolutely unbelievable. I, I just want to say that I'm I'm glad you clarified that with Chris Jericho because you know the first thing that went through my head when Mark said it is boy that Kenny Omega fight in Japan didn't go well and everyone knows about that. No, it was a five it was a five star match, Luke. Um, but but out of how right, many it, stars? That match, Chris Jericho was really out of shape. Oh okay. Out of how many stars, by the way, is it a five star scale system? Yes. Okay. It was the match of the year, the first one. Nice. So, this it, was, so is this, this like the, based on Yelp reviews that you can do for wrestling matches or like who, who rates no, it? No, Luke, it's Dave Meltzer. Oh, my God. Come on, man. You don't know who Dave Meltzer is? He was a big deal back in the day. I thought you'd know who he was. He's the, the, the leading critic in the world on, on wrestling matches and gives everything a rating and based on, you know, like how believable the tricks are and how many things land in the promotion stuff of it all, you know, he's got a whole system. Oh, Meltzer. Yeah. Yeah. I am sorry. Yeah. I was just, you know, thinking so much about Omega kid versus Jericho or whatever that I, I forgot all about Meltzer. I know all about him. Look, here's what I'm going to say. As much as you were into the Hardys, like this is the exact kind of wrestling you used to dig. So you can mock it if you want. But the fact of the matter is I wouldn't have gotten back into wrestling in 2000 if it wasn't for you. And it doesn't sound like your brother would have either. So No, I just I just liked how casually you dropped the like, well, it wasn't as bad as the Kid Omega fight or whatever. Like that was supposed to mean something to most of us. No, like I, I think that's I think awesome that if you're into it, but come on. <laughs> Because Chris Jericho did look super out of shape for that. So I thought that's what he's referring to. Maybe Kid Omega was just in really shape. great shape. No, was I, was just, I was just referring to the fact that he looked really gross in, oh, yeah. the, in the clips I saw. Okay. He's 48 years old. I mean, come on. Well, uh, speaking so, of professional, is, is there anything else about this that, you know, I, I, I mean, I can't, I'm so excited and I didn't take down notes. I, I can't really. Uh, I mean, if you if you like, it just had a little bit for everybody. That's so that's what made it such a great. It was it was the the brother against brother thing. Um, I, I watched all the little promos and the lead up. I begged my wife to let me get the uh, the pay per view, um, and all the it, it just was it was just great. I mean, it was everything you want, every style of wrestling you want. Like cheesy, it was funny, it was dramatic, it was wild, it was it was awesome. It was I, like I didn't. I was been kind of disappointed because I've been watching WWE and, and the storytelling has been so bad. And I was just shocked as to how, how good these guys who were, you know, WWE cast offs did. Well, maybe uh, they need competition. Stuff. I mean, wasn't the best WWE stuff generally when WCW was going well? Yeah. And that's, and that's basically their argument. They, you know, they want to tell good stories and make wrestling fun for everyone. And, and they did a really nice job of it. So I, I will say while I didn't watch the pay-per-view, I did I did know about it beforehand and I did read about it afterwards because I was curious and it did get me sufficiently interested that when the, the show debuts on TNT, and I, I think that might not be till October now. Yeah. It's the fall. Yeah. Right. But I will actually probably check that out because I'm sufficiently, my, my interest is peaked. Um, whereas I really dislike from what little I, I still watch, I really dislike what the WWE is doing, not including their politics of holding shows in Saudi Arabia, of you know tacitly, implicitly, and overtly supporting the Trump administration and their politics on that end, and just general my knowledge of how poorly their wrestlers are treated. 
by the company in general. It but I, 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 I don't disregard any of what you're saying there, but like, do you really think that they're getting supreme healthcare and not using steroids and getting horrible concussions in any other division? I mean, I kind of feel like if you're, if you're going to watch wrestling, you're, you're going to have to accept that that was the grave medical mistreatments of them well, is happening. There, there is, there is difference. Um, I have read in that AEW is looking at offering health insurance, but also too, they are, from what I understand, they're independent contractors in a truest sense, meaning that they can, the, the wrestlers who work for that promotion can also take jobs elsewhere. Yeah, but if you're an independent contractor, that also means they don't have to give you insurance or any other oh, types oh, of that's, benefits. That's like, one of the things that they're changing now. With the anyway. WWE, though, you're, you're labeled as an independent contractor, but you're assigned exclusively. Sure. So you can't get work elsewhere. So that's the difference in that you don't have the opportunity to go somewhere where you can get those kind of things with WWE, whereas... Are there other promotions that are offering those other things? Well, AEW is. Oh, they are right. offering benefits yeah. and all they're, that stuff. They're going oh, to be. Mark's, Mark's phrasing was looking into doing it, which didn't send me a wave know. of confidence. Uh, what I understand is because they're not like a fully formed company yet. Oh, okay. It's doing it shows you how what I know what I'm talking about very well. Oh, okay. Yeah, I maybe could have phrased that a little better or... You know, I could have not taken for granted your knowledge on the subject. Uh, but yeah. I saw a Deadspin article once on Twitter, and I think I read the opening paragraph. Hey. So everything about this new company seems to be a better, um, just a better, you know, corporation. That they treat people better. They give them more opportunities. That they're not as, you know, evil empire as WWE. And they give people the freedom to tell their own stories. I mean, that's that's the biggest draw for a lot of these guys who've been told or buried. That you know, they've 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 been told what they have to say. They've been buried and not been able to be themselves. And that was one of the the interesting parts about this. John Moxley, who was like I said, Dean Ambrose in the WWE, and extremely popular. Um, he was in a in a uh, stable with uh, Roman Reigns and Seth Rollins, two of the bigger stars, and he was forced to say some just like absolutely awful things. And he kind of let everything out on the Chris Jericho podcast. And it was, it was really just like amazing. Like when you watch the WWE, you can kind of see why it sucks. Um, and, and so we, Oh, go ahead, Mark. Well, I'm just going to say that that's what I'm going to do. But once AEW has to start putting out a product weekly, I think that you're going to see, they'll have a lot more editorial control over what's being said than right now, where everybody has, five months to prep for a one-off yeah that's fair but i mean they don't have five months because uh fighter fest is just around the uh the corner um i think june 29th get your tickets in daytona beach i don't even know what that is that's the next pay-per-view man fighter what? fest yeah it's a play on words but like fire fest it's like making fun of you remember like the fire oh oh wow okay that's topical um yeah. that that won't play dated you know six months from now okay they don't care and and i suppose when you're trying to launch a promotion to naming something after one of the biggest debacles of the last 10 years it's, it's a good route to go it's really what you want to invoke in the minds of your potential consumers it's it's made, yeah i mean it, it it could be really bad i mean if the if the show's really bad but it's that's kind of the joke you know i mean it's the kenny omega was you know the story goes if you watch uh being the elite he was the guy that got to name this and the the joke was it was like the worst name ever and like how could he do this but he stuck to his guns so that's what it's named okay that that right there is an argument for stronger editorial control it's, it's uh one of those things you're not going to get you had to be there man apparently. You being the elite. apparently well speaking of things that you have to watch uh Luke, where can they watch you around the internet? Uh, so I am on Twitter at Kid Omega Superfan sixty nine. Mark, I, I am on Twitter also as uh, Jericho's Gut seventy seven. I don't have anything funny to say, so I'm just going to say uh, thanks a lot for listening, and we'll see you next time. Oh, I won't be here next week. Yeah, uh, why? High ratings week. It's just going to be me answering questions to myself about three eleven lyrics. So tune in for that. <laughs> extremely high readings week.